Here's an iPhone 7 Plus that does not power on because it got water damage and has a huge short. In today's video, we're gonna repair it with the help of our friend, the Infrared T2S Plus. There's a new thermal camera that was sent to me. They claim is better than the C Compact Pro, which is what I use on a daily basis. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of thermal cameras. So let's see how good this camera works, how to set it up, and everything about it. So thanks a lot for joining us here on the channel. I'm Jesse from VCC Board Repairs. Smash the like button if you like these type of videos. Subscribe to the channel to see more like this. And share this video with any friend who's looking to get a thermal camera. Also don't forget down below, I will link to all my, all my tools that I use in today's video, as well as where to buy one of these if you're interested. So let's go ahead and get started with this video. First thing is let's look over the website. This is the Infrared T2S Plus. It's for sale on AliExpress. I recommend you find the Infrared official store and buy it from them. It is 369, which is a lot less than the C Compact Pro. It is a USB type C device. So it's only Android right now. They claim to have an iOS version coming soon. Um, so let's scroll down here. You can see a lot more you know, specs about it. Uh, one of the things is it does come with a built-in macro lens. That means you can get up real close to the subject like the motherboard and have it be in focus and be able to clearly see the, you know, the surface of the board. Uh, let's see, it has a 256 by 192 resolution. I believe that's better than the Seek Compact Pro. Also, one of the other key features of this is that it has a 25 hertz refresh rate. That means as you're moving the board around under the thermal camera, it's a lot smoother motion versus the Seek, which is around nine hertz. That basically means 25 times per second is having refresh in the image versus nine times a second. Um, as you can see, the, this is talking about the macro lens, which is adjustable, so you can twist the ring to get a better focus. And so for our case, we don't really care about how high the temperature goes because it never really goes that high. Uh, here's just some more pictures. So yeah, I definitely recommend you browse through this if you wanna get more technical on the specs and stuff. So inside we have The usual, the user manual, like a warranty card or something. Uh, it does come with it, its own USB-C extension cable, which is pretty nice. And it also comes in a little soft pouch. And here's the camera itself. So it's actually yellow. So this is how you know it's a T2S Plus. There is a few different variations of the infrared cameras. So make sure if you're gonna get it for uh, iPhone repairs and, and motherboard repairs, make sure you get T2S Plus, which is this yellow one. So to set it up is you'll need an Android phone. And what you want to do is search for Xtherm, X-T-H-E-R-M, and it should be the only infrared one here. Uh, one thing is I'm running Android 10 and I think most of us are going to be, if you're using a USB-C device, most likely it's going to support, you know, the latest version. So if you try to install this specific one, it won't work. I ran into this problem when I first got it and was kind of confused. But if you go to the description, there's actually a link here that links you to the, to the APK that works with this Android version. So you click on that, you download it, you install it. I'm not going to go through that steps. But you click download, you make sure you allow uh, third party sources to install the APK file. Um, so you just go through that process. If you've installed any APK file before, then you kind of understand. But once you install it, what you do is you can plug it in. And it does click. So all thermal cameras that I've used, whether it's the Seek or this one, it does a clicking noise, which is kind of like it's trying to focus. So you can see there, it's now working. So let's get, now that we got it working here on this app, um, I haven't messed with it too much. So I will like your feedback. Let me know what you want me to test or what, what you want me to try specifically. 
But here's kind of the UI. So here on the left is the gallery. So if you're taking pictures or videos, uh, you can record within the app itself. Take a picture and then look at the gallery here. So let's uh, look here on the upper right. Oops, let's go back, back. So if you click here on the temperature, there's a few different settings you can adjust. I haven't messed with this enough to know. All right, so I don't know what that does. And in the settings, you could change the color palette. So if you prefer uh, like a white, like a white color theme, a black color theme, iron rainbow. So there's different colors. So I've been messing with these temperature settings. I don't really know what any of this means. Like I adjust it and I click save and nothing really happens. Um, now this is a cool feature. You can turn on the camera. So you can see the camera compared to the thermal image and get a kind of better idea. Although for what we do here with Phone repair is not gonna be useful, which is fine. If you want to turn on the logo, watermark, auto shutter, I don't know what that means. Looks like there's Chinese, English, and Russian, and then some specs or like some about info. So let's go ahead and actually get a board under this camera and see how it looks. All right, so I have a DT880 with this iPhone 7 Plus that has a massive short, which is perfect because we can use this as kind of our base baseline test. So what I'm gonna do is first plug in the USB-C plug here. Let me unlock it. And plug in the camera here. So this makes it easier to kind of maneuver. So let me set it up this way. Okay, so I'm gonna put the phone here. And then, so this definitely needs a stand. I'll, let me know down below in the comments if you want me to make a stand for this camera. As you guys know, I have a Seek stand specifically designed for the Seek, but if I get enough requests, I could also make one for this infrared. Okay, so without applying any heat, this is what it looks like. Actually, let me lift it up closer to you guys. All right, so it's kind of actually a little washed out look to it. I wonder if this button does anything to help with that. All right, let me change some settings here. All right, so this cable is not useful just because the way I'm trying to record here. I need something solid. So I unplugged it and plugged it back in, so. I think it's backwards. All right, this is much better. All right, so let me change the settings. I do like, I think the iron rainbow. Okay, it's kind of hard to see. So I gotta be real close to kind of be in focus. So I'm gonna do is I'm back out a little bit and then twist the ring and then, okay. So now we kind of see the board. It's a little washed out, kind of hard to see. You can change the colors if you want. All right, let me turn on the DT880, which is gonna generate a short. And okay, so now it's a lot easier to see. If I twist the ring, I can move up closer and be in focus. 
Okay, see that? So let me change the color so you guys can see how the different color palettes look. So rainbow kind of makes it the most obvious. Let me see, let me get a little further away and adjust the focus. So yeah, that's not really that useful. Yeah, you gotta be up real close to know exactly where the short is. It's a little weird. Okay, there it goes. So you can see there's definitely heat here, heat on this IC, and then whatever that is, I think it's a coil. I don't know what this button does. I'm trying to figure it out as we go. All right, what do these settings do? Uh, do not stare at the lens directly at the sun and other high intensity radiation sources, including the non powered, including the non powered state to prevent burns to the detector. Oh, um, I guess I can't, I can't push that top button. Uh, that's that's annoying. So I'm clicking through the different menu options, but I don't really know what they do. Oh, the shorts turned off. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. Is this a good thermal camera? If you guys seen my other videos, I have a C Compact Pro. I wish I had like touch to focus or some way to kind of adjust, to kind of pinpoint the heat. If I change any of these settings, it gives me a, oh, app crashed. All right, DTA shut off. So yeah, I don't know, what do you guys think? This says 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know. This definitely needs a stand. That way you can use it hands-free and it's a lot easier to manage. So let's go ahead and take a look at the board under the microscope. All right, so let's inspect the motherboard, see what was heating up. So I, do, I did see heat here. I saw heat somewhere around here. And definitely this coil appears to be appears to be bad. The water damage on this board wasn't too bad actually. There's definitely been worse cases and but there's a massive short here that's kind of messed up a lot of this. So let's try to figure out what components are heating up exactly. So let me get my camera here. I'm gonna check this again. Okay, power. Okay, let me see if I get closer. So, I wonder how close I can get. I think this is the closest because the ring doesn't move any further. So, you know what? I'm going to take a picture. I don't know if that captured it.
All right, so here's a picture. So it's definitely that first cap here. So there's a cap going this way and it's gonna be the cap that goes across it. So let's go take a look under the scope. Yeah, so it's gonna be this one. So the clear shorts, pretty simple. Um, we just twist our blade and break it off. Uh, let's see, there's anything else that might be shorted. Look at that, this trace just got eaten away. All right, let's check again with DT880. Do we have current consumption here? Yes, we still do. So if we go back. Oh, look at that, another cap here looks shorted. Took a picture. All right, so this time it looks like it's that largest cap here, the top row. So if we go back under the scope, yeah, is this I kind of suspected something was up with this one. So this one, let's see if we could pry it off. Yeah, you can see like this top layer just chipped off. Okay, so it's not coming off so easy. So I'm gonna put it on my board heater. And then I'm gonna pick off the underfill. Well, let me lock this in. So let me clean off some of this underfill so I can get a little more leverage in here. So I'm using a number 11 X-Acto blade. There it goes. Let me get all the debris out of the way. All right, so we were looking at that capacitor there. So let's see if that short is gone. Actually, the board is pretty hot. Let me, let me put this to cool down for just a second. All right, so now that we've cleared both of those caps, I'm gonna put this on. So there's an eight milliamp draw which is nothing, I just leave it as is. It's prompt to boot by pressing this button. As you can see, it is climbing kind of in a gradual sense versus an instant kind of current draw. So this actually looks like it's booting. So what I'm gonna do is let me pop this into a known good housing and see if we actually get a working device. This looks like it's working. All right, so here's my tester. OEM housing. I save a housing for pretty much every model for cases like this. You know, the original housing is water damaged, so we don't know if any of those parts are any good, but this is known good parts, known good screen. And I only plugged in the bare minimum power button, charging port, screen, home button, and now battery. And now that I have it all Ready to go, let's plug it in to charge. Let me turn on the charts. And let's check the USB charging current. If it looks like it's charging normally, then we should see the Apple logo, and we do. So, it looks like we have successfully repaired it, but we can't be too sure until we get to the home screen. We're able to unlock it and connect it to the computer, run a backup, but Getting it to the lock screen is pretty much a done deal. So let's see what happens. I just felt to vibrate. Oh, look at that. iPhone's disabled, try again in one minute. Good thing is only, <laughs> I only have to wait one minute because if it was just fully disabled, then I would, be, I would have been screwed. But you can see the phone is functional. 
So this case seems to have been solved. Although I'm not gonna go through the whole data recovery process, this seems to be like a successful case. There was no uh, normal uh, current readings on the DT880. Charging looks normal. Kind of, let's see. Okay, so battery is almost fully charged. So the USB charging current here on the upper left corner is not gonna be at its full potential because it has a full, almost fully charged battery. So all indicators point towards this being a successful case. All right, so what do you think? Is this a good thermal camera? It is an infrared T2S Plus. Do you plan on buying it? Do you have any questions about how it works? Anything I may have left out in the video, let me know down below in the comments and maybe I'll cover it in a future video. So for me, I think it's a pretty good camera. It costs $369 from AliExpress, which I'll link down below. It comes with a built-in macro lens, so you do save money there because on a Seek, this is something you buy separately. And it has a really fast refresh rate. So you can see I can move my hand and it moves a lot smoother. So if you're trying to find the short that maybe you couldn't capture on the Seek and on this one, you might be able to capture it like if it flashes for a brief second. But um, one of my downsides is that I don't like the app. I don't like that it doesn't do that pinpoint feature that the Seek does. Whereas if you find one cap, it just kind of hones down on that one spot. Um, but it is pretty cool they include a cable. I do plan on, on trying to figure out how to get this to integrate with my Seek stand. You know that so you can use it hands free as you guys know it's kind of hard when you're trying to hold the phone and trying to inject voltage and like move the board around so having a stand will be a huge bonus for this so i'll, I'll see what i could come up with make sure you subscribe to the channel because i will post it there in my community tab so thanks everyone for watching let me know down below what you guys thought make sure you check out this t-shirt in the description as well Subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, all that good stuff, and share this video with all your friends who do phone repair because they probably need a thermal camera as well. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.